Jay-Z has done it all. He's recorded over a dozen albums. He sold over 50 million records. He's topped the charts, brought the Nets to Brooklyn, built the business empire, and has the hottest chick in the game wearing his chain. Got the hottest chick in the game wearing my chain, that's right, ho. And it all began 20 years ago on June 25th, 1996, when he released his debut album, Reasonable Doubt, independently on Rockefeller Records. There weren't any platinum singles or number one billboard hits. That would come much later. Instead, Hove did it with 14 tracks of raw and uncut hip hop. Peep the style and the way the cop sweater. The number one question is can the feds get him? But he didn't do it alone. Jay Z co founded a record label to make that first album happen, teaming up with Dame Dash and this man, Kareem Biggs Burke. What's up, man? What's up, family? 20 year anniversary of Jay Z's Reasonable Doubt album. Yeah. How did you first meet Jay? Um, I met Jay through Dame. Dame and I grew up together in Harlem. We was a part of his crew called The Best Out. The Best Out. Crew. Yeah, we used to throw parties all over Harlem. Dame had left that for, for a bit and got in the music business with his cousin Darian Dash when they was managing Future Sound. I say to fight the power, by any means so, and swing and swung at, go blow for blow. And Future Sound turned into original flavor. He started uh, managing them. Come on, you little hottie, although I may look like the man, I don't Nobody. He signed original flavor to Clark Kent's label. Okay. Clark introduced Dame to Jay. You wanna fly style? Jay's about to show it. Well, Carl, can I? It's never a question of how, but when I rip it, will I quit it? Forget it. Still I always a point whenever I hit it. Waiting for bitten. Don't do what y'all done it too late, y'all did it. And then, you know, a couple about a year or two later, I ended up meeting Jay. Um down at uh by Quad Studio. Jay kicking it, hey, ribbing it way past why I'm so crazy. Ah. So you meet Jay, what are your first impressions of him? I actually didn't really like Jay's music at that time. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't, an, I wasn't impressed. He had Can I Get Open, which I thought was cool. Yo, G, can I get open? You know it, hey, G, can I get open? You know it. At that point, this is 93, probably listening to Scarface. See it through reality. Never leaving the game, cause it's the street like fatality. You know, ghetto boys. Cause the cop was a pussy ass bitch. And if you played the cop, nigga, you got your ass kicked. Probably Snoop was probably out around that time. So things, you know, a little harder. Well, Jay had the style back then. It was like a tongue twister style. It was a very yeah. popular style in rap, mm -hmm. dance effects. It was the way to rap. If you wanted to get on, it was yeah. like, it's how you sound. Wherever the weather, I'm better. You seen the pale link in Paverson. Jay Z's in Baverson. Your time after, rigger the rhyme after, rigger the last Jay Z rhyme. So you can say, yeah, I'm supposed to they line. Peace. So he sounded like the era. Yeah. That he was in. I buck wow with style to the out. I'm ripping and running a hundred miles. I'm well in doubt, baby gal. Yeah, I guess, but you know, again, you know, Dots Effects, they had a little more going. Um, they probably had some bigger songs and things like that. It probably wasn't until I heard in my lifetime that I knew that um, it was, you know, he was, you know, that guy. Never twist the cap or more liquor. Only pop and dropping crystals down my throat, take a swigger. At this time, Jay Z was, was, was shopping for, for deals mm -hmm. and trying to get signed. And he, he was striking out. He didn't have any luck. How many cells I gotta kick the proof I'm dead? I can even kick my rip that shit and catch a breath. Some of the music that Jay was shopping early on, I think that people didn't really gravitate towards, even though lyrically, you know, he was probably on top of his game. Original rap, I'm making it slap. I'm hemming it up like that, stinging and striking and swinging it fat. Bring it back. People just couldn't really see the vision. And like I said, neither can I at that time. Reasonable doubt. When, when does Jay start recording an album? When, when is the moment like, okay, we're gonna put an album out in the family? I was uh, 95. They kind of approached me and was like, look, you know, we've been trying to get this done, but we think the better play is to kind of do it ourselves. Instead of getting a label deal, we should just go independent and own, you know, 80% of the record and get a distribution deal. I gave them an offer they couldn't refuse and uh, we kind of put it together. <laughs> so you guys went through priority and Freeze Records is, is where how it originally came out, right? Well, yeah. What a lot of people want to know, they want to know, um, did you start that label, Rockefeller, the one that you want? Oh, yeah, 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 me, my partner, Dame Dash, and my man, Biggs, we put together Rockefeller Records. We got distribution with priority. Freeze was a was a dance label mm -hmm. that had yeah, distribution. They had, yeah, yeah, they had distribution. They did some hip-hop. You know, the deal we signed with them, we thought we had 80%, but it was 80% of his piece, which was a small piece. 
So it really wasn't you know, the deal that we expected. So instead of making uh, three or four million dollars, uh, we probably made 30 or 40,000. Know? Wow. So um, it didn't really stop anything on our side because we was living good at that time, but uh, it taught us something. Can I live? Jay has the line, we don't lease, we buy the whole car, as you should. We don't lease, we buy the whole car, as you should. Yeah. <laughs> Dame said you wrote that bar, that, that was yeah, a... Yeah, yeah, well, I used to say that all the time. Okay. So, yeah, and then Jay took it in, yeah, and kind of put it, so I forgot about that, yeah. yeah. Oh, see, I got, I got you, you know, yeah. let's go, all right. Yeah. Did my homework. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Dead Presidents is my favorite Jay-Z song ever. Now, it's funny because Dead Presidents remix is my favorite song. Okay. I had read somewhere that you had some influence over that, too, that some of your slang made it when um Jay has the, the line, I want money like Cosby, who wouldn't? Yeah. It's that kind of talk that probably made me think yeah, you ain't got no pudding. pudding. Yeah. So sick of niggas. I want money like Cosby, who wouldn't? It's this kind of talk that make me think you probably ain't got no pudding. I used to say that a lot too. Pudding, you know, that was money. So a lot of guys was like, yo, they, you know, they get money. I was like, come on, he ain't got no, he ain't got no pudding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so Jay, you know, flipped it because, you know, the, that commercial was out at the time. Flipped it and put in the song. That was the original Dead Presidents. Yeah. Part two is the one that made the album. Who wanna bet us that we don't touch letters, stack cheddars forever, live treacherous, all the etc. Mm -hmm. I, I always personally wondered why did he redo Part one was fire. On yeah, his own. One the rhyme clip, me and my conglomerate, shall remain anonymous, could have been the finest click. He had the verse, and it was actually my idea for him to uh, just put it over the original beat. Wow. Yeah, but the, you know, because he would spit that verse a cappella all the time, like, you know, we riding somewhere. I was like, yo, just just put it on the same beat. Divine intervention can't stop by from drinking my ties with Ty Ty down in Nevada. Ha ha, bye bye. 22 twos. Too much West Coast dick licking. And too many niggas on a mission. Doing your best JC rendition. Too many rough motherfuckers. I got my suspicion that you're just fishing a pool of sharks, nigga. Listen. Yeah. Um, when, when you talk about, again, lifestyle, mm -hmm. that's a record um, comes off like, like a live skit, features Maria Davis. That champagne down. Kick a little freestyle yeah. from in the yeah. Like it wasn't just a skit, that was a real thing. Yeah, yeah. We used to do uh, performing SO's, uh, Country Club, and uh, Sweet Waters. So those were all the spots that Maria Davis frequented and had her Mad Wednesdays, and uh, Jay was a big part of that. So. That actually built a huge fan base for us at the time because we were kind of go there and take that over. And you know, you talk about bringing the lifestyle. I mean, at that time we had uh, picnic baskets in the club and garbage pails full of um, crystal. So, you know, we would go in there and, you know, buy a hundred bottles. So we were kind of going before Wednesday and be like, yo, stack up on Cristal because we're going to buy everything. You know what I'm saying? Make sure the owner had enough and just buy out the bar. I smell some reefer. Now you see, that's why our people don't have anything. Who was smoking reefer? Who, who, who was it that got kicked out? Oh, nah, they Is that were just a real saying, story? Um, nah, that was, that's why we was messing with her because she always say something like that. Who told me to shut the F up? Get him out of here. But at that time, actually, none of us smoked. This is almost like the height of marijuana and hip-hop yeah. culture. So even to hear a rapper say, I don't smoke weed, was just like, what? Yeah. We were drinkers, you know what I'm saying? So we, you know, we drank heavy. Oh, 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 come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Damn, damn. You gotta perform first, man. No! There's a skit on the album, the pool skit. That, that you're actually on. Hey, Purse, rack him up, man. What you betting, bitch? Bet the same thing. Hey, yo, I had yo, you got the money, man. You asked me. It's shit. funny because I just spoke to Premier and he was like, man, I will go in the, come in the studio and you guys are being there taking up the whole reel on skits. Mm -hmm. He said, y'all was wasting all my reel. I come in upset like, yo, these dudes just wasted 15 minutes on reels. He said, y'all would just laugh all day. Santa cake face. <laughs> <laughs> So we was in there, I mean, it's a lot of stuff that didn't make it too, so we were just trying to, you know, give some life to the album. What's some of your favorite songs in y'all? I just want to talk about your personal favorite. We know Dead Presidents, 
uh, two. Politics. Ten year belly on, heavy on the wrist. I face use with the diamond blooded hate suits and blind your face shoes for life. When I live, while I'm watching every nigga watching me closely. The Bring It On verse is one of my favorite verses ever. Um, Mannerisms of a young Bobby, Bobby De, Niro. De Niro. Spit Spanish wisdoms in the whip with De Niro. Crime organized like the, the Pharaoh. Pharaoh. I cream, my diamond gleam, hot post like I keen. Got a lot of things to drop, Brooklyn to Queens. <laughs> Try to have my long oh, jeans. Come on, man, yeah. I got you, man. Yeah. Um. Mannerisms of a young Bobby De Niro. Spent Spanish wisdoms in a whip with De Niro. Crime organized like the Pharaoh. I cream, I diamond gleam, high post like I keen. Got a lot of things to drop, Brooklyn to Queens. I gotta keep my steam. Niggas wanna try to hem my long jeans. That's funny. You know, again, 2016, I think if somebody's watching this and hearing Reasonable Doubt for the first time, even a bar like crime organized like, like the Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Yeah. might not get that. What, yeah. what, what is that? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dad. Yeah. Nah, forget that. What about, I'm 2.2 pounds, you barely 125 grams. Wouldn't expect y'all to understand this money. I am 2.2 pounds, you barely 125 grams. Wouldn't expect y'all to understand this money. Because right. everybody call each other money. Right. And he said, wouldn't expect y'all to understand this money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, stuff like that is just, right. I mean, that was incredible like I would just mm -hmm. rewind that little part right there all mm -hmm. the time in the car you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying it was like <sighs> can I live well, I'm watching every nigga watching me closely we, we talked about the one line that you kind of influenced are there any other lines on the album that directly like you like oh that, that you could point to where the influences are like what can I live is more or less about Emery's experience in Vegas. Viva, Las Vegas, see ya. Later at the crab tables, meet me by the one that starts a G up. I mean, he took over Vegas. He bought everything out. He was balling down there like uncontrollable. You know, he was at the blackjack tables. And then that's where Emery became Vegas Jones during that trip. Which is now his Instagram name. Yeah, exactly. It amazes me that there's other Reasonable Doubt era material that we haven't heard. Black Gangster which is yeah. a song that everybody knows from Jay-Z. Yeah. Ride through the ghetto, windows down, halfway. Uh, halfway out of my mind. Music on nine, blasting Donny Hathaway. Me there was an original version that was supposed to be on the Yeah, that Ski actually produced that um, song, um, and it didn't make the album. That was, uh, lyrically, that was probably one of our uh, favorite. Had to hustle in the world of trouble. Trapped in, claustrophobic. Only way out was rapping. So how does it make the album? Who decides to cut this from the album? I think it was just, you know, the material at that time. Um, I know Reach the Top was a song that Dame wanted to make the album that didn't make it, that Clark produced. I got to get it till then I won't stop. Too many years rock bottom, I gotta reach the top. I think me and Jay probably decided on that, but I know Dame really wanted that song. It's funny because I just heard it the other day again. And I was spoke to Jay, he's like, y'all just been reaching, listening to Reach the Top for the last week and a half. He's like, damn, that's crazy, because he just heard it um, about a year ago. He said somebody played him some old songs. The song Hot that I co-produced with Ski. Um, you co-production co credit too? Yeah, like, we yeah, it all? Yeah, that was actually, the, uh, it would have been the last song. So that didn't make it, and I asked Ski, he can't find that anymore, too. I mean, the lyrics to that was crazy. You know, he was talking about this young guy. It's like, you know, even when I put him on a block and disappear, I make his ass Indian summer hot. It's so hot, I'm blowing up. Mm. Oh, man, that shit was crazy. 95 South. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that to me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> There's a song called 95 South. Yeah. That I think just last year when Jay-Z did his B-side concert, I think Clark has said that was his favorite song. So we, yeah. we know that the existence of a song called 95 South. Yeah. Nobody's ever heard it. Yeah. So you can't just name drop 95 yeah. South. So you got you to rewind. <laughs> What's 95 South, my brother? I mean, it, 95 <laughs> South was crazy, you know, about Jay rapping, about um, hitting 95 and stopping off in towns and things like that. But it, it was probably about six songs that didn't make it. The earliest songs from the album, though, was coming to age. We out here trying to make our white in the cold green. I can help shorty blow out like Afro Sheen. 22 twos. I've been around this block too many times. Rock too many rhymes. Cop too many nines too. And Cashmere Thoughts. Mm -hmm. 
I talk jewels and spit diamonds, all cherry like a hymen. When I'm rhyming with remarkable timing. So those were done years before Reasonable Doubt. Those are the only three that still made the album. This was supposed to be Jay's only album. Mm -hmm. You guys together built Rockefeller, you built one of the best rap careers, you built one of the best, most storied labels that there is. Yeah. Rockefeller chain, you guys got into fashion, you guys were selling liquor, you guys were making films. Looking back now, remembering back then, did you see 20 years into the future? Not at all. Um, you know, making that album, it was just the here and now. Being, the, you know, these black guys, you know, from these urban neighborhoods who, you know, Dame getting his GED, J, J dropping out of school when he was 10th grade, later getting his GED, and me barely graduating from high school to put together this conglomerate that, you know, reaches down to the millennials today, right? Because now it branches off the Kanye West who now has good music, right? So if there was no Kanye West, there would be no John Legend and Big Sean, right? Designer Panda who's relevant today. Guys are getting into business to saying, oh, I want to have a co-venture. I want to have this company where I can build and sell one day. And they might not even know what's the genesis of that, where that came from. To see how this album actually changed worldwide, what people are doing is, is just crazy to me.